welcome to chemistry lover and you are watching the basics of organic reaction mechanisms so uh, in the previous video i discussed about the molecular orbital theory and uh, the homo and lumo and the frontier uh, molecular orbitals in this video i will be talking about the conjugation and delocalization so this is a very important topic the conjugation and delocalization and uh, there are several question may comes in your mind in uh, many times uh, during doing the reactions for example why the allylic systems it may be allyl cation or allylic anion or maybe allylic radi uh, radical but but why they always react from the terminal and not from the inner side or why any in general any conjugated system always react from the terminal side or uh, let's say you may think why uh, the cyclobutadiene has a rectangular shape rather than a square shape or why benzene is more stable than any other compound or what is the aromaticity so these all questions if comes in your mind you will get all of their answers after watching this video so watch this video till the end so basically uh, we will talk about conjugation and uh, that means we will talk about the p orbitals and the pi bonds so forget about the sigma bonds and just concentrate on the pi bonds so uh, for talking about the conjugation or delocalization let us first the very simple example of conjugated system and that is the allylic system so this is your allylic system where let's say we talk about allyl anion so allyl anion has a negative charge here and a pi bond here. this is a general representation of allyl anion but we can have another resonance uh, canonical form like this so this represent the allyl anion now there may be allyl cation or allyl radical also so if we uh, look into the orbitals involved in this allylic systems we can see that there are three p orbitals one is there one is there and one is there we can label this 1 2 and 3 so c1 c2 and c3 and three p orbitals are there on each carbon atom now uh, while discussing all this uh, conjugate system we take the xy plane as the molecular plane and uh, the P, uh, sorry the z axis is perpendicular to the molecular plane so uh, to participate the to participate in conjugation the pz orbital is the participating orbital so we will always uh, take into account the participation of the pz orbital in the conjugation now we can think any conjugated system that uh, no matters what is the length of the conjugation we can th uh, compare it as a particle in a box model particle in a one dimensional box, box. so although uh, this conjugated system is not linear but we can think it as a linear system and that linear system we can compare with particle in a box model and from that the idea about energy will be very much simpler so for this allylic system you can see there are three p orbitals for one two and three carbon atoms and they will uh, uh, interact to form three molecular orbitals. Now, if we compare uh, this pi allylic, uh, this uh, pi allylic system with the particle in a box model, so we know for particle in a box model, the first three energy level or the first three wave function uh, instead uh, will be psi one, psi two, and psi three, and they will basically look like this. Right now, uh, taking into mind uh, the shape of these three wave functions, we can uh, construct the molecular orbital for our pi allylic system. So our pi allylic system will look like. So actually, we should uh, draw it in this branch manner. This is because this is the uh, perfect way of drawing. Now we can see this will be our orbital. So basically, for the first case, there is no node. So all will have the same symmetry. So there is a perfect bonding interaction. Whereas for the second case, there will be a node between these two, so it is a non-bonding situation. So there is a node here, and in the third case, there are two nodes basically. So you can see uh, this will be the case. Okay, so you can see there is one node and there is another. So this is your psi one, this is your psi two, and this is your psi three. Okay, now uh, if we uh, compare it with it, now you can see if we uh, so. Uh, if we want to make this one more uh, uh, exactly like this, then we have to also think about the coefficient of these p orbitals, and uh, that means uh, we can adjust the coefficient. So it look like looks like this uh, this shape. So that means this 
uh, orbital which is at the middle that will have the highest coefficient then these two will have the low coefficient so this is how it will look like this okay so now uh, the symmetry will be similar this is how the symmetry will be but in the second case you can see there is a node at the middle so that means there is no coefficient of the p orbital at all or that molecular orbital at all in this c2 position whereas these two will have the highest coefficient so now you can see these two will have the highest coefficient and for the third case it is it sorry for the third case it it basically looks like this so that means you will have a more or less similar coefficient of the three uh, p orbitals or the molecular orbital so this is how the psi 1 psi 2 and psi 3 look, looks like now let us uh, do the filling of these molecular orbitals with electrons so uh, first take the case of allyl and allyl cation so allyl cation will have only two electrons and that will be placed in this molecular orbital that is the psi 1 molecular orbital so for allyl cation case the lumo the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is the psi 2 orbitals orbital that is this orbital and we already discussed that it is the frontier molecular orbital that will decide the reactivity of molecule so all the reactivity of your allyl cation will be uh, controlled uh, by the nature of this lumo or this psi 2 orbital now you can see in the psi 2 orbital the highest coefficient of the molecular orbital on this terminal carbon atom whereas the middle carbon atom has no coefficient so that means if you have a allyl cation system the nucleophile will always react either this terminal or on this terminal it will never react here so uh, this is case of allyl cation now let us take uh, talk about allyl radical so uh, for allyl radical another electron will be placed in the psi 2 orbital and this is called the somo that is a singly occupied molecular orbital it is it can act both as homo as well as lumo and basically uh, for your allyl radical this psi 2 will uh, control all the reactivity of the molecule and in that case also you can see the coefficient is most on the terminal and that's why your allyl radical will also react from the terminal and it will never react on uh, your uh, middle position now let us talk about allyl um, anion for the allyl anion another electron will be added here and in that case case also you can see this psi 2 will react its reactivity and in this case it is basically the homo so the coefficient of homo is most on the terminal carbon atoms and that's why uh, the, from the terminal it will always react either from this terminal or from this terminal it will never react from the middle so uh, this is the case of allyl cation allyl radi uh, allyl anion and allyl, allyl radical and you can see for all cases they will react from the terminus and not from the middle now let us talk about the next member of this family and that is the butadiene system okay so uh, for the butadiene system we can again uh, draw the four in this case there will be four wave functions if we consider the particle in a box model and there will be corresponding four molecular orbitals so in this case the wave functions will uh, basically look, uh, look like the similar and they will look like this okay so now again you can see these will be the four molecular orbitals here the first case there is full bonding situation in the next case there will be basically one node and that means uh, the symmetry will be slightly different so you can see this is the node in this case you can see the orbital basically look like this and you can see the sorry in this case the bonding will be between this and here you can see there is one node there is another node and in this case there is basically all four nodes are there and there is no bonding interaction at all and you can see there are one two three so there are three nodes so one, uh, one node two node and three node and these are the four molecular orbitals your psi four psi three psi two and psi one now in this case also you can see uh, for your normal cyclobutadiene 
so this is your cyclobutyl ion and uh, cyclobutyl ion has four electrons so four electrons will be placed in this lowest uh, two molecular orbitals that is psi1 and psi2 and in this case you can see the highest occupied molecular orbitals uh, in this case the highest occupied molecular orbital is the psi2 that is this psi2 is the highest occupied molecular orbital and it has the highest coefficient of its molecular orbital is at this two terminal so that's why you normally in ge the general reactivity of your cyclo uh, sorry, not cyclobutyrine. Uh, normal butyrine will always be from the terminal and not from the uh, inner side. That is, this this reduced selectivity is not will be there. Uh, the reduced selectivity will always follow the rea reaction from the terminal position. Whereas, if you now uh, look at the reaction on the cyclobutyrine, so basically, I am talking about the LUMO. So this will be the LUMO of the cyclobutyrine, the psi 3 and here also you can see the highest coefficient is on the terminal. So if uh, any electrophile also react uh, with the cyclobutyrine that will also uh, attack, uh, the attack will then also take place from the, sorry, if any nucleophile will uh, react on the cyclo, cyc, uh, uh, not, not, not cyclobutyrine, normal butyrine, it will also attack on the terminal side and not on the uh, inner side. So that is also may, uh, that can be also uh, interpreted in terms of Halley's bond theory. That is, if the attack take place on the terminal, then the anion which will be generated that can be stabilized due to the conjugation. But if attack take place from the inner side, then the anion uh, cannot enjoy the stability of this uh, double bond. But this molecular orbital theory explain it more more beautifully. Now. These are the reactivities, but now let us talk about the stability of this conjugated system uh, rather than normal uh, isolated system. So why conjugated systems are more stable? So for that, we have to consider a diagram. So in this diagram, a circle is first drawn like this and this just uh, a line which bisects this cycle. This indicates the energy of non-bonding interaction. So this is non-bonding energy. Okay, so this is non-bonding energy basically. And below it, if any orbital is there, that is the bonding orbital. And if any orbital is above the line, then this is the anti-bonding orbital. Now let us first talk about the normal case for the ethylene. For example, let us talk about ethylene. For ethylene, the two orbitals, it's psi1 and psi2 or let's say pi1 and pi2 if we place these two orbitals in this diagram they will reside one here and another here and you can see this is the middle of this uh, circle we can join them like this so okay so this gap will basically represent the energy gap between homo and lumo okay and uh, in this case the field orbital is this one and this gap will represent let's say this is delta e dash and this will represent uh, the extent of stability of uh, this system. Now, uh, let us talk about uh, anion system, okay? Or uh, let's say we talk about the butyrone system. So, if we talk about butyrone system, we can see we have to place uh, these carbon atoms like this, and this will be the middle. Now, we can join them like this, okay? So, this is this is, uh, these are the levels, this is 1, this is, uh, so this is basically psi 1, this is basically psi 2, this is psi 3, and this is your psi 4. So now, one thing you can see is that, in this case, the energy lowering is higher, so this delta E double dash, this is higher than this delta E dash, and also you can see, uh, at this particular case, the difference between these two levels, so this is basically the homo, so this is the homo, and this is the LUMO. So, uh, the orbital which is just below this non-bonding level, that is the HOMO, and the orbital which is just above this non-bonding level, that is the LUMO. So, in this case, you can see the HOMO-LUMO gap is lower than uh, what is in case of this molecule. So, you can see this delta is much higher than this delta E. So, if it is delta E uh, triple dash, so this delta E triple dash will be lower than this delta E. So, that means, uh, as the conjugation increases, the homolumo gap also decreases and at the same time, the uh, energy of the orbital is also lower, that is the molecule gains stability. Uh, if, if, you, uh, if you have any uh, uh, difficulty in understanding these things, I will uh, explain 
the concept of stability in a conjugate system in a more simple way that is i already uh, told that you can consider any conjugate system as a particle in a box model now if you consider the energy level of particle in a box model that is basically n square a square by 8 m a square that is if all the things are constant this energy is proportional to 1 by a square now a represent the box length okay so we can see that as the length of the box increases the energy decreases so as a increases the energy decreases so uh, if you in, uh, increase the length of conjugation that means you are increasing the extent of uh, conjugation and you are increasing the box length so that will be uh, manifested in the energy of the molecule so as you increase the box length the energy of the molecule will be lower so this is why the conjugation always lowers the uh, energy of a particular system now this can be always uh, this can be again explained by this uh, particular diagram so this is basically a circle and you can see if uh, the number of conjugation is go, uh, going to increase then you can see they, these levels will be very closely apart okay and basically uh, their energy level will always go down and at the same time as they are closely apart so the homologous energy gap will always be lower so this is why if we consider the uv spectroscopy so in uv spectroscopy what happens so in uv spectroscopy one electron goes from homo to lumo like this now more uh, will be the gap between homo and lumo higher will be the necessity for the energy of the light or uh, in the reverse way uh, the low will be the gap between homo and lumo less uh, lower energy light will be necessary to excite a electron from homo to lumo that means uh, if we, if the conjugation increases the absorption energy or the absorption uh, the wavelength of the absorbed light will go to the red shift uh, whereas if the conjugation decreases that is the homo lumo energy will increase and the absorption uh, wavelength will shift it to the blue light region so this is the uh, uh, this is uh, the relationship between conjugation and the uv spectroscopy now uh, so uh, we see that as the conjugation increases two thing increases one the energy of homo increases and the energy of lumo increases and this is a very important con conclusion because uh, at the uh, later stage of our discussion when we uh, discuss about the chemical reaction so we will see that how this conjugation will affect the reactivity of a particular molecule now these are the case of simple uh, non cyclic compounds conjugated but non cyclic compound but we know that if uh, we consider about a conjugated cyclic compound then the scenario is uh, more complicated for example if we consider the case of benzene okay so we know that benzene we all know it is a aromatic compound and what is actually aromaticity so uh, so according to the hookel theory we say that if any molecule has a 4n plus 2 number of electrons and that is fully conjugated then this is called a aromatic compound and if you like this video then give a thumbs up and share this video with your friends thank you for watching